Gross. And brush my teeth. Got toothpaste in this one. Let's see if there's any in this one. Something's weird about this. Hey, how'd you get in there? Didn't see you there. Um, so I just lowered my uh, EV6. So while I have you, let's uh, let's show you how to do it, just in case you're curious. Starting to film the video for the install for the spring. So this is my driver's side. I've already finished the passenger side. So I wanted to make sure everything was good. Let's get started. So I think, honestly, it's not that many tools. It's actually really easy. You need a 19 socket, 17 socket, uh, a 17 and a 14 wrench will help. And then an extra jack with a piece of wood. And I'll talk about why you need that or recommend that. But over here, what you'll see is this is a 19, these two are 19s. This is a 17, the sway bar one, and then that's really it, and I think this is actually a 14, so that's why I have the 14 there. And then up here, this is a 14 as well, 14, 14, and then when you pop this out, this is a 19, and I'll talk about that when I get the strut out. All right, so first step, you gotta make sure you jack up the car on both sides because the sway bar will have a lot of tension on it if you don't. So my car is jacked up on both sides and I'm going to first remove the sway bar end link nut. And that I believe is a 17. And my friend let me borrow a really, really nice impact that has honestly made this install 14 times easier than it probably would have. But on top of that, everything is still fairly new so um yeah let's get started on this everything just comes apart pretty quickly okay so the nut came off and now the sway bar and link is out now i'm going to tackle just this brake line i'm just going to move this out of the way this is a 14, so I'm just going to quickly undo this 14. Actually, that might be a that might be a 12. Maybe you do need a 12. Yep, a 12. Sorry. So that's out of the way, and at this point, I am going to move all this stuff out of the way. Okay, so now I'm gonna take my 19 and I'm gonna get these guys off. And luckily this uh, the thing just kind of nails them off. Okay, and then it helps to take your 17, which is on the other side, and just hold it. Comes right off. So, I'm trying not to block the camera. That came off. And in fact, on this one, I'm just gonna loosen it and you'll see why, and then I'm gonna get the jack under it. That's why. Okay. So I just kinda jacked the car up. So at this point, I'm gonna leave this here for now, um, and I'm going to go up here. Basically, that's the last screw that's on the bot or nut at the bottom. I'm gonna go up here, and we are going to Loosen those. These are 14s, so I'm just gonna loosen them. Okay, so key note to remember here. There's a yellow at the top of one of these uh, things right here. You'll see the yellow and you see this arrow pointing. Keep that in mind because that's gonna be important when you're putting everything back together. Can you take these all off? So now, the nut's all off. 
So then you want to come back down here. And you want to make sure that there's proper support for the rotor under it. And you can kind of put it wherever you want, but I have it right under the rotor. So that way when the strut comes loose, not everything just falls. And puts a lot of pressure on the brakes and even the axle back there. I will take this. This is the hard, not I would say hard part, but just the heavy part. So then I just kind of fan dangle this. Okay, so I got that last nut out with a little bit of fan dangling. I did this a little off, but it's fine. Um, so basically, now the strut is loose. The other side was easier because I was prepared. Take this out. So everything is out. Now we're gonna take this strut assembly and we're gonna take that nut off right there. And it really, in this situation, helps to have a really good impact wrench. You have to insert a star tool and then wrap it around, but that is a 19. So this is the other thing that I wanted to mention. See these arrows? These point to the inside of the car. So always remember this yellow needs to face in. Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and take this nut off. So before you do that, we're gonna need some spring compressors. I rented these from AutoZone. I think it's like 50 bucks to rent them, but then they give you the money back when you're done. Um, they're a little annoying to use, but it's fine. Okay, so those are on and I'm gonna tighten them to compress the spring a little bit. <clears throat> I'm actually going to face it out just in case. Take my 19 and there you go. Comes right off. So now just take the top hat off. Leave all that. The spring should pop right off. Then you take the eye box spring. Make sure it is facing the right way up. So the writing is right there. Facing the right way up. And then here's the other important part. So once you get it on there, you gotta make sure that there's a little groove here. So right there. It needs to sit exactly flush with the little notch at the top, at the bottom I mean. And then you take the top piece and it looks like if you look closely, there's a little area that shows you where the stock spring was sitting. So I'm just gonna try to mask that up and it looks like it was right about, can't really see in the camera, but you'll see a little groove. Looks like it was sitting right there. So I'm gonna mount it exactly right there and then I wanna make sure that this yellow piece is, well, you can adjust that later on. And I will put the dust cap, dust boot or whatever uh, after I tighten the nut at the top. So then you start the nut at the top with your hand, making sure everything's still lining up properly. Take your impact. And it looks like it's all the way in. I'm going to just double check it. Yep, everything looks good. Everything is still aligned. That's aligned up there, that's aligned down there. And now starts the act of putting it back together. Okay, so for this part, we're gonna put it back in the car. Make sure this yellow one is facing into the car. This part is facing out because that's where it'll attach to the car. And uh, I basically, at this point, it's nice to have a secondary person to help you with this because you're gonna need to send this part through up into the car 
And if there's somebody up top, they can just actually just screw it, start the screw for you. So that way you don't have to try to do it yourself. You can if you want to, but it is a little bit easier when there's a second hand available. So here you'll see that the yellow is sticking up. I'll just get this started and then I'll put the camera down a little bit. Okay, so I just hand tightened them up there. You don't want to tighten them too much because you need some movement down here. And now it's just a matter of getting all of this lined back up and attached. So we're going to do that now. Get it lined up. One. It's right there. Take the screws that you took out of here earlier and tighten that one. Pull the sway bar through. Start that one. Nuts for this, these two bolts. Screw them on, get them started. Grab your 19, oh yeah, 17, right here. What you'll notice is on some of these, like it has a mark on the suspension and then it has a mark at the top of the nut. That's right around where the nut was, so I think I might have over torqued this a little bit. It doesn't seem to have one on this one, but all the others do. Just mount this back up. Take your 12, or what's this one? Yeah, 12, and tighten this one. If you want to be sticklers and look up the torques specs, feel free. So that's on there. It's not going anywhere. That's on there. And now for the sway bar. Let's. Hope that this guy cooperates and I can just get it done. That does not look like it's going anywhere. And I think that's basically it. Everything else is mounted. Um, hopefully there's no clunks. I'm going to check. Looks like everything looks good up there. Now I just got to tighten these screws up here. And once this all kind of gets settled, I'm going to go back in down there and uh, retighten everything down there. So grab my 14. Okay, so those are all tight. I'm gonna double check all that down there. But as of right now, it looks like everything is torqued down. Not to spec just yet, but I will do that. Don't forget at the end to put these caps back on. All right, we're gonna pull out and then measure. And so, well, I'm gonna drive around for a few minutes and then I'm gonna measure it, so. All right, so here we go. I'm going to make the first drive after the front springs are installed. And hopefully there's no clunking or anything, so we will see. So far so good, no sounds. No clunks or anything. Pretty good. I have to say outside of trying to film and installing this, this was one of the easiest installs I've ever done.
Okay, so I'm gonna park and we're gonna get out and take a look at the the rake, the front rake. <laughs> Definitely lowered the front a decent amount. Can't really tell you guys. I'll take some pictures later when the sun's not as harsh. And then I will also do some comparisons on the measurements. But that's definitely a smaller gap than it used to be. So based on what I think I know, I think all I need to do is undo this, these two, and this whole thing should drop. And then I just pull that spring out and put the new one in. Quick reference point, 19, 19, 17. Okay, so the rears are a little bit of a pain in the ass because when you take this apart, lining this bolt back up at the bottom, that bolt is a very big pain in the ass. Uh, so I would definitely recommend a crowbar of some sort. And you'll need a 17 and a 19 wrench and also a um, socket with a really nice impact would definitely help. And I would have maybe a small flat head screwdriver to help you line that hole up and you'll see why. Hopefully I'll be able to capture this on video, but I just spent about an hour on the other side. Uh, but I think I figured out how to do it properly. So let's get started. First, I'm gonna disconnect the sway bar. Okay, to pull that out, take some of that tension off. And then all you gotta do is undo these two. It is kind of a pain in the ass. So I'm gonna loosen it with my 19 wrench first. And then I'm gonna use the, uh, the impact to uh, take them all the way out. A cheat bar. I don't have a cheat bar. So I'm going to grab my torque wrench. Okay, so on the other side there is a nut. So once you get that tie slightly loosened, Okay. It's also a 19 and you can't, you have to use a wrench on that side. You can't really get an impact or a socket in there. Okay, so that's loose. Okay, and that's loose as well. Grab my impact. I've worked this thing today. It's a lot of force because it's threaded. Okay, and when you're starting to get near it, Put this, put that extra jack that I told you to have. There you go. Put it under it so it doesn't, I don't know if you need it there. I like the peace of mind of having this right under here for some reason, because it made a pretty loud snap. Because this thing, there's a lot of tension on this. Okay, so that is out and it is burning. of pressure and I cut my finger so that sucks yeah so just be careful with this piece it there's a lot of I don't know that spring seems to be extremely compressed um, so I just want to make sure everybody is completely aware of that okay so now if you can see there's this is just sitting on the, the jack so I'm gonna lower this jack a little bit and now the spring will come completely out. Just takes a little bit of fan dangling. Pull, push this down. There you go. And there is the spring. So take this little thing off the top of the OEM one. There's really no other part besides this. Sorry, my finger's bleeding, so I'm just trying not to. 
and then you make sure again there. and then we just got to make sure this bottom lines up with the rubber so this part's a little weird too because this thing is dropped a lot so when you're lining it up it doesn't seem like it's gonna actually line back up with the bottom rubber piece so you see the end of the spring right there you want it yeah how do i do this i should be wearing gloves but i couldn't find them and i was in a rush so i was able to down here hopefully you guys can see that down here i lined that up with the rubber held it in place and got the top lined up so now it looks like it's not gonna it's gonna have this gap but obviously you're gonna compress this now this is where the hard part is now now you have to jack this piece up get it lined up with both of these this is the freaking annoying one um, this caused me a lot of concerns and I, issues and I had the same issues with my stinger one but This is the last step. So I'm going to try to see if I can fandangle it um, If I run into the same issues, then I will comment on it and I'll pause the video and try to figure it out But right now I'm just gonna try to jack this. I'm sure some some mechanics gonna be watching this and be like There's a really easy way to do this. Um, I Don't know what it is. I've tried it a couple times. I'm sure there is but I'm gonna use a pry bar All right, let's go I'm gonna put that right there so you can see this really annoying, annoying process. All at the same time, I'm keeping an eye on making sure that lines up properly. As I compress this, that spring does start sitting into that spot. This does have a little bit of wiggle room. So I readjust this. This one is not hard to get in. It's this next son of a bitch and you can see already just makes it easy because you can move the suspension around and almost lined up you can see that hole and I will be able to insert the screw and the nut right through that so I'm gonna do that so at least it gets that on there Goes all the way through. Put the nut on it. We'll tighten it, tighten it at the end. So now, let's see what's the situation here. You will enjoy this one. This hole needs to line up to this hole, and now you will see the issue as you raise this. First of all, you can already see how far over that is and I need to move it basically using this jack and line this piece up with this but this flexes so whenever there's any pressure on it it moves and then if you get this the screw on one side you can't get it on the other side so that's where the pry bar comes in to kind of help help it into place so now I'm gonna struggle mistake that I did earlier too. Do not jack up this point because when you jack up this point it actually jacks that up with it. So you actually want to go further back where you're not the jack's not touching that. So that's my bad.
that hole right there is not lining up. So what I had to do was basically, I'm gonna move this out of the way, take this and one side at a time, I had to, I need to get it to go that way a little. Okay. Yes. Okay. So half the battle. Now the other part of it is, is getting it through the other side. So as you will see here, which actually I don't think you'll be able to see. Yeah, so that little white spot, I gotta kind of angle that. I think what I figured out is the key to success here is to put a pry bar in between the shock and the knuckle, I guess knuckle, whatever you want to call it. And as I push it, it actually moves it around quite a bit. And I think I have it lined up, so I'm going to attempt to screw this in on the other side. Got it. Yes. Okay, so it looks like the key is to get between that knuckle and uh, the strut. So now, I think the rest is just putting everything back together. So I'm gonna put the nut on here. One thing I did forget is my washer for this one. So I'm going to redo that one because that one is easy. So just give me one sec. All right, grab my 19 wrench and tighten these. And I believe I just gotta do the sway bar and I am done. Make sure you do the sway bar. There. I'm gonna tighten that with my 17. So let's get the wheels on and let's see what happens. drive around real quick hopefully I did something everything right and hopefully there's no clunks that makes me super nervous so I'm sorry this was a very amateur install video I'm not used to doing install videos and I knew this would be a hard one to film just with how much access I didn't have to holding my phone it doesn't feel much different than stock still a fairly comfortable ride uh, obviously, I'm not able to drive it hard right now, uh, but I'll test that out a little bit. I'm gonna drive around a little bit and then I'm gonna go home and tighten everything again. But the good news is there's absolutely no clunks. I'm gonna drive a little easy until, oh my God, there's an EV6. That is crazy. Wow, in my neighborhood. And that blue is stunning. All right, let's go home. It doesn't really look that different, unless the gap was that big. But you know what won't lie? Is measurements. And also I feel like it might settle a little bit, so we'll see. <laughs> 